Hello, everyone, and welcome to definitely the beginning of this episode of Local Chat. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is a man who has a face. It's Ian Gibson. They got rid of the alligator, and it was about eight feet long, but it's bye-bye. I tell you what, you ever move in my neighborhood and we don't like the look of you, we're kicking you out. Speaking of not liking the look of anyone, it's Jason I wasn't prepared with any alligator or <laughs> animal or creatures or anything, so uh, I'm here, though. Uh, and the alligator might be in my backyard. I don't fucking know where I'm it going. It could be. This. It might be. I, I've been told, I don't know if this is true, but I've been told that that when you call animal control and you say, I have a gator, they call a private trapper, and the trapper shows up, takes the gator, and then takes it somewhere and kills it and sells the hide. What? So that gator should be dead. That's rude. I don't know, man. There, there, there's a lot of them. They are not endangered, and that sucker was literally eight feet long. So, good riddance. Good riddance is what we say to people we don't like. <laughs> Isn't that right, <laughs> folks? I want to talk to you about frogs. Um, we have lots to, <coughs> to talk about tonight. I'm almost done with COVID. This is the first day I did not take Dayquil uh, and heroin. So, just heroin today and i'm feeling great uh magic drug <laughs> magic drug um NyQuil with heroin is what we need next yes oh, NyQuil. yeah oh, well that's the nyquil yeah. party mm. yeah you take nyquil you try to stay up and then you get the heroin um i'm running out of spoons folks it's, uh, like, the, it's like the four loco the, <laughs> the four loco you got the upper of the caffeine and the downer of the yeah. alcohol and it's bad times delight oh there's there's something I forget what it's show it's from where they're like calculating the ups and downs of the different drugs they're taking to make sure they're right in the middle for like something. I don't think it's always sunny, but that the always is... sunny bit I love is when they're like, they just have mixers everywhere. Did you guys know you could just drink mixers and they're like drinking <laughs> soda and orange juice, <laughs> which is great. Um, we're not here to talk about mixers or heroin. We're here to talk about video games. First, we got to talk about what we've been playing. Jason already regrets being on this show. Um, do you good. want? Can, it's too late. can you? I so I played the demo to this game, but can you tell us about Live Alive, Live Live Live? Yeah, Alive. We can. First thing, first question I have is yeah. that the is that the official pronunciation? Live Alive. Yeah. No, I was gonna get there. Uh, I have the, <laughs> the game right here, and I'm aggravated because it says live. In my opinion, it's live a evil because it's e like live oh, backwards. Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about that one. So I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. But every time you see it, like on any streaming platform, or you try to order it or anything, it's just live a live. So that's wait, a you, shame. wait, wait, you said live a live. So that means there's in my head there's three possibilities. There's live a live, yeah. live alive, alive, yeah, and then live a, live a evil, or. Live uh, alive. That's fucking awful too. I mean, I know what you're saying. Like that, you could <laughs> yeah. like you. It's dumb. The name is. I mean, that's Square Enix for you. So, uh, <laughs> triangle strategy. Project Every Kingdom alive. Hearts name. Yeah, Project <laughs> Alive. You know how it goes. Uh, Jesus Christ. It's Final Fantasy. Even though there's 15 <laughs> of them, there's not the final of anything apparently. So idiots. <laughs> Uh, so you really you really shoehorned yourself on that first one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. They're screwed. Okay, the point of the game, the demo, as we'll mention, they are good at releasing demos that are rather complete, is what I've heard. I heard you get like three mm -hmm. of the chapters. I don't remember which ones are in the demo. I think it I, was I I Alboy. It was space because I played the space one. I think it was space. There is there a modern day one. There is a modern day, and one. then a, like a prehistoric one. Yes, there's a prehistoric. I think one. those ones because I I only played like half of the space one. Okay. Um, is how far I got. The premise of the game, this is before Chrono Trigger came out, which is actually for the SNS. This is a remake of a game that came out, I believe, in 92 is what I found. I never played the, the original. Oh, one. it's a remake. I See, Correct. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah it's, well, it's a, they did the, they did the, uh, what is that? Octopath Traveler Correct. remaster of what's it. What's the original called? Dead T Dead? <laughs> I wish. Dead to Dead. Such a bad hey, what joke. <laughs> Still would have been a better name, probably what they have. But the the point of the game is 
you have like seven episodes that you can pick from. You can jump in, jump out of like like episodes and time. They they take place during a specific time. One's prehistory, cowboy, uh, imperial Japan, modern day, future, and you can jump in and jump out. And each one of them has different gameplay. Like prehistory is just a straight RPG, but there's no dialogue. It's just them shouting in pictures. And I've liked that one the <laughs> best. That was the first one I played. You play mm-hmm. as a caveman, and he's just like, I want woman, and he just goes chase after them. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, they they have, like, different episodes. The combat is the same throughout the entire seven episodes. You'll mm. jump into, like, a grid-based combat. You run into an enemy on the map. You'll start, like, a strategy battle where you each take turns fighting on, like, this grid. And they have, like, an area of effects and stuff on the grid. Um, sometimes you can, like, shoot, like, uh, stuff. You walk up and club people. There's different weaknesses and strengths to people's abilities. I'm not describing it well, but it's really hard because the combat is not where I think this game shines at all. Mm-hmm. Even oh. though all of them have the combat. Um, I think just the way the world building works is good. I like the 2D. I think they did a great job with this and triangle strategy. I think they both look great. Um, I like how bite-sized the stories are. So usually JRPGs, they're much longer. Uh, can take a long time, obviously. Like tra- Trails of the Sky, it takes fucking forever. I finished one before I got on stream today, like the cowboy one. Uh, you can just finish in a couple hours. Uh, I finished mm-hmm. each one per stream is what I've been doing. And I've done three of them. Uh, I've done the cowboy one, Imperial Japan and prehistory. And each one of them did something different too. like Imperial Japan. You're training three pupils. Cowboy, you're trying to like help this town stop these bandits from coming in. And prehistory, like I said, you're a member of a tribe who's trying to save like a woman from being uh kill it in some ritual uh by an evil tribe uh and like yeah like the combat's there but like for me like since they that's the only consistent thing throughout the 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 game actually because each thing does different like how you play the their story the combat's the only thing that remains consistent and that's why i'm kind of like uh the combat's okay right. sometimes it's fun sometimes like when you're in the imperial <laughs> china you're train you're a level 10 guy you're already capped so like there's no you're trying to train pupils instead um oh. so you're That's not like leveling up your guy like the prehistory you're like you're straight up i'm level one i need to fight to like get stronger uh imperial Ch- uh, china you're like ah no i'm good i'm just training these guys who need to get stronger but i'm fucking op and you were like one-shotting people so i think even in the wild west you only had two battles and prehistory had like 50 so there's two oh. battles in the wild west it's Did crazy. it give you any sort of tutorial when you? Uh, kind of, yeah. So when I played the tutorial, uh, the prehistory, there was no dialogue. So all of their tutorial was in, besides the main game tutorial, was in pictures. Uh, okay. It's a good one to start on, but like, in terms of like what you knowing what's going on besides the actual like gameplay, or the 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 combat that stays consistent. That was the only thing you got really information on everything else you're like oh fuck like i don't really know what i'm doing uh which one to start with people have recommended different stuff you can start anywhere you want yeah you can quit if you don't like the episode either like i'm not feeling this episode i'm gonna jump out of it and go to the next one um it's definitely solid i don't know i really like it it is 50 to 60 bucks i disagree with that price already uh Mm because i think i'm gonna finish this game i think this game is probably gonna be around 20 ish hours maybe like 20 to 25 Mm -hmm. uh because i've already played five or six and i've already done three of the ep- seven but i think there's eight episodes because there's eight episodes on the back they didn't hide it so <laughs> i think i think there's eight episodes the big secret that's the yeah, it, the uh chapter yeah in the in, in the trailer they all you also meet up with your people across history so oh. eventually my prehistory guy is gonna bump into the cowboy i assume i don't gotcha. know how like the bosses i guess i don't know how, this is not very spoiled but the bosses from each chapter have been like a guy with the same name but like this guy was odious rex and then the the main cowboy coming over was captain Odie or something like that oh so i don't know how that's thematically gonna match up we'll see if that's like some evil guy or it's that's some pretty cool i like that i don't know but this game did a lot for i think just like i said i think the story is what's really the best part about it not the, the combat which is strange i mean damn it, it is an rpg yeah. the combat's fine but i don't think it's what is the strongest part about it i i don't know what it is like there's a lot of these games coming out recently which is like very pretty jrpgs on the switch 
like that 2.5D type of style. And none of them have really grabbed me enough to actually play them, to even play the demo. But something about Live Alive and the reviews that it's getting and just kind of, I don't want to say it's art style, but it seems like like you're talking about these, like, it, it looks like it has a lot of variety in it. I may have to play this. I'll probably wait for it to go on sale, though. The, the demo, say 60 bucks is more I mean, it. Square Enix demos are pretty good. Like, I said, yeah, Triangle Strategy, you got to play, like, pretty high into it. And if you get a full episode yeah. of the demo... Yeah, there's three really episodes see... in the demo. Yeah. Three of the eight? Yeah. Yes. I mean, Which it's it like... Already... Does, it, does it carry over? Yes. Yeah, it does. Yes. Square Enix is really good. Yeah. Because, yeah. so like... I would, um, play that. Yeah. I would yeah. do that. You get different challenges and different stuff at them too so, yeah it's yeah. like that dragon quest builders 2 demo was Fuck. 15 you're hours. like you're like my mom she just says the same like three stories over and over again i'm just relating it to square enix they're good at their demos they're good okay. at their demos and like it's i said time nana it okay. makes sense i i think it, like i said just being able to have completely different stories and do stuff like that like each story has like different ways to play the story even though they have the combat is the same that's kind of wild to me that's yeah really strange i don't think i've ever seen anything like it before. yeah kind of like so, dragon quest builders too yeah so <laughs> i'm kidding well okay that i played will i'm just kidding ian's being a Get dick because he's a fucking piece of shit garbage man <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways folks uh jason thank you for sharing live alive um Maybe. Maybe. it sounds good and i'm glad you're you're moving away from those childish fire emblem games so i'm happy for you <laughs> they haven't come out they, they came out with one i don't i don't like warriors games so i didn't play oh come on uh oh wow that muso. is surprising muso game wait really that i don't like warriors games or i would no, no i just i thought i thought you were a big enough fire emblem fan to like consume everything so, but I, but it's good it's good that you're like you know what you have standards i'm, not, I'm <laughs> I'm not a I'm not a Marvel fan that eats shit every day and grins, you know? <laughs> I have standards. If, if 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 there's something with the story in Three Hopes or like in their supports, I'll watch them. Yeah. I'm not gonna play through Warriors games yeah. to oh, I didn't do it the you. first one too. The first Fire Emblem Warriors either. So good, good for you. Yeah. Good. Um uh, I'm gonna go next, uh, because it's my fucking show. Uh I haven't been playing much uh since uh I played the great Outer Worlds. Uh, DLC. Um, I've been not feeling well, as I have said sorry too many times. Uh, so I've been watching a lot of TV, and I have a Switch. Uh, so I started playing Ocarina of Time. This was I mostly like started playing it. Now, real quick, I was, is it is it Ocarina of Time or is it Ocarina, Ocarina. of Time? <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Ocarina. Tell me more Kitty, about right. Yeah, tell me more about Dragon Quest Builders too. Ocarina of Time. Sorry, it's <laughs> actually genuine question though. Is this your first time playing this? No, I have played it a bunch as a kid. I beat it on the oh. 3DS when it came out on the 3DS, and I have not. I've never beaten it on the N64. I'm playing the N64 version, and I haven't played it since the 3DS one came out in 2012, 2013. Eleven, I thought. Um, or eleven, yeah. Wrong. Oh, sorry. Uh, Majora's Mask came out in 2013. I believe 14. that's correct. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, um, so I've been playing it. It's weird how much I remember of the childhood section, and I remember absolutely nothing about the second half of, or second, like, three quarters of that game, because mm -hmm. I never got that far as a kid, and I only did it once on the 3DS. Um, so I'm trying really not to use any walkthroughs or anything. I'll occasionally check oh, it. Oh, you fucked up. Um, to, to find things. Uh, so I have... I'm in the second to last temple, almost done. I'm like 15 that, hours in, I think. That could 14 be anything, because you can do the temples out of order. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm second to last shadow, temple though. in the order of the walkthrough I'm vaguely following. Oh, okay. um, I'm in the shadow temple right now, and then the whatever, the spirit temple, is that the last one? That's the last one, yeah. Yeah, so that's the one I have after that. Um, I've been actually collecting heart pieces and skull tullas. Ooh. And wow, you're doing the skull tallest too. I'm not oh actually God. doing them, but when I see them, I like remember and go kill them and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I've done a couple. I did all the mask stuff. I did the. I traded up the sword. Um, it's actually really fun. I'm having a great time. I think I might play some Majora's it's Mask afterwards. Well, um, it really is a great game. game. So um, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, I played it for the first time on the 3DS in like 2015 or 2016. And um, I, I definitely needed a walkthrough. I wasn't religiously going through it, but there are definitely parts where you're just like, what am I supposed to do now? And then you check a walkthrough. Like there's one part where something with like the lake and your fishing rod and like a certain time of day or something with the moon. And I was like, I never, oh, never yeah. would have gotten that. So so having the walkthrough definitely helped because it was always like, I'm not sure what to do. Let me try something. OK, I really don't know. Let me just tell me what to do next and then go. OK, OK. But yeah, I, I absolutely enjoyed it. Even playing it in 20, 2015, 2016, whenever I played it. Fantastic game. Yeah, and like it's weird too. The controls aren't it's like they're fine. Like you miss having the right stick a little bit, but and there's like one or two times when your like stuff gets messed up. Actually, my complaint about the controls is how they're mapped on the fucking Switch like garbage, where you have to use the the joystick for the C buttons, and half the time I it oh, calculates it as down and diagonals yeah. don't. Diagonals work, and it's a crapshoot which way it's going to pick. Good luck playing Ocarina then, because um, that, they'll take your your yeah. C button inputs and do the wrong song. Yeah. So, it, yeah. well, thankfully, the one thing they do do is if you hold the right trigger, the the four face buttons become the C buttons. Never mind. So that's good. That is helpful. But when a song has A in it, you like hit yeah. the notes, go to A hold the thing again to hit it again so like there's stuff like that and i miss the on the 3ds version if you click on the song in the menu it just plays it for you but in the n64 version i had had no idea yeah in the n64 version it plays it for you lets you practice it in the menu but you have to leave the menu open the ocarina and then play the song and it's just like half the time i get it right half the time i miss one note um i do have the n64 switch controller in its box right here which i just remembered like the other day, I was like, oh, I do have one. But I've been playing handheld mostly anyways, and the Pro Controller's fine. I don't understand why the Pro Controller doesn't map the C buttons to the D-pad, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, anyways, Ocarina, Ocarina of Tim, Ocarina of Time, great. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, Hitman 3, I checked out the new map on Tuesday stream. Thank you to everyone who stopped by. Sibylla was there, Halucha. We actually got a new follower who was actively chatting, which was nice. Um, they said they were what? playing the new map in VR, which was uh, kind of wild oh. to me. We'll mention what, that, what, I guess, when that comes up. Dude. What is the new map? Because I couldn't quite tell from all the the tweets and stuff. It wasn't super clear. Like, tell me what's what's the gimmick, the setting, etc. of this map. <laughs> so <clears throat> it's supposedly I don't remember the story of Hitman, but the gray the gray guy who's with you, like your brother or whatever, he yeah. used to run uh like a military group before you uh mm-hmm. well, he came to join you in his old job or whatever and so the c- lieutenant from that went rogue and started his own military group and is now working on an island with a pirate lady and so i didn't really follow the story but you have to kill him and you have to kill the pirate lady and you have to get you have to stop this uplink that's happening and you get the keys from them and there's like a little village with people in it Then there is like a military base camp, like they've set up everything. Then there's a like pirate like base camp area with a radio tower and everything. And then at one point I found a scientist in the jungle ruins who you could bring poison frogs and plants to and he would turn it into poisons and stuff. So that was neat. I found a, a in one of the ruins ruins. There was like a place where you could um, shoot a cannon um i was watch that stream i was being super reckless and just killing everyone and trying to as i would put it vinny it uh so that was pretty fun but i'll i i completed that save offline but i need to go back in and actually like play and follow mission story beats and see kind of what it's about it's free hitman (laughs) hitman content it's a new map um i'm glad they put it out there i think they're trying to tide people over until they get that new uh, like campaign mode, uh, base hideout mm-hmm. mode thing they're adding. Um, Hitman's still good. Three's still good. Controls are great. Um, I did keep trying to hit the right trigger to look f- center myself from Ocarina of Time, which doesn't work in Hitman. Um, and then uh, the only thing, it's not something I've been playing, but I finally managed to snag uh, an EverDrive for the Game Boy, uh, the X7. Uh, from Krixz, K R I C K Z Z. 
Uh, they are he makes all the ever drives. They're based in Ukraine. So as you may expect, it is hard to for them to manufacture things. I think they said they work 24 hours a day just in their little place. Um, it's it's yeah. cool. Their prices went up because of the war. I don't mind paying for that. Um, so now I have an EverDrive coming uh, so that I can put all my Game Boy ROMs that I have from my Game Boy games onto and then use it on my analog pocket. So that'll be fun. That'll be nice. What's a um, ROM? <laughs> oh, it's like a, it's like uh, it's That's like a... It's like ramen. It's delicious. It's a free okay. game. Yeah, it's a free game. Uh, <laughs> so I'm excited for that. I've been they've been out of stock, in and out of stock for a while, and I finally caught one of the in stock tweets uh, and got that. Uh, the Game Boy Advance Mini I have can technically play Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but it emulates it. It does not play the ROM, which is an mm -hmm. interesting thing. So I'm glad to have picked this up. Uh, and of course, now the Open FPGA support has come to. Uh, Game Boy Pocket, so or the uh, Pocket Analog Pocket, so of course now I'll probably be able to just put the ROM straight on the pocket, and I'm out a yeah. hundred bucks. But who cares? I will support uh, them and their efforts uh, because it's worth it. And uh, that is all I have been playing. Ian Gibson, who's got his big old list of deliciousness here, hidden away from our prying eyes hey. by his blackened marker. Uh, the there's, one I'm gonna, there's one I'm going to hardcore criticize him for, depending on how he responds to it. So we'll see. <laughs> there's oh, um, ju just a little behind the scenes. Will and I have had several conversations about how in our rundown for the show, we put your name and then what games you've been playing. And we were like, man, there's always things I want to bring up, but I always forget to. So I want to put notes, but I also don't want other people to see the notes. And I was like, well, what if you just, you know, highlight it black and then you can unhighlight it for yourself so you can see it. And we were like, yeah, it's a great idea. And I did that. And apparently I'm getting shit on for it. <laughs> Anyways, I don't remember this conversation. Uh, I played a little bit more of Stray. Stray's the game that uh, Kyle and I talked about last week. Well, we'll talk about it a little bit as well. Um, Kyle really liked it. I enjoyed it. Uh, I got about halfway through it in my first playthrough first first sit down, I should say. Um, and I came back to it and I played about 15 minutes of it and then I put it back down. Um, this, this game, it's, it's weird. Like I wasn't a hu super huge stray fan when I first played it, but there's really not much there compelling you to come back. Like if you sit down, you play that game for an hour, hour and a half, like I did you pretty much know what that game is and you pretty much get all the warm and fuzzies that you want from that game. Um, you also will probably get to the, uh, I don't really think this is a spoiler, but there is a shooting section in the game that doesn't quite feel right. It, it feels a bit too offensive when they could have just had that mechanic be defensive. Um, and so the game is still really nice in how it's like designed around emulating the feeling of being a cat and all the cute things that cats do and, mm -hmm. and how they interact with the world and how it's designed. But the fact that I played it for like 60, 90 minutes and then I sat down the other day to play it and I just dropped it after 15 minutes. The game's pretty thin. It's you only how, like four. Hours. I was just say, yeah, how I think it's I think it's four hours long total. So I got yeah. I, I based on how much stuff is in the game. I think I got pretty much halfway through. And I, mean, I don't know bucks too for four hours. That's gotta be a very compelling well, four hours. Jason, first of all, game pass. If you don't have game pass, get game pass. PlayStation. Uh, plus. I also don't. Uh, have PlayStation oh yeah. Sorry. Though, Play so. Yeah. PlayStation plus harder buy. Cause I believe it's at like the higher tiers. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, so it's, it's weird. It's, it's like a one hit wonder in a way, but it's more like a half game wonder. It's like, look, you play half that game great time you have a great time don't pay full price for it you don't really need to play the whole thing kyle said he, he played it all the way through in one sitting that's probably the best way to play it honestly yeah because it it's got a lot of pizzazz and charm to it but there's just not not quite enough what would, would, <laughs> would it be a good game if you were playing with somebody who doesn't really game that much and be like hey i've got a game yes. we can both experience it's not too hardcore Let's get you yes. in on this. Okay. Yeah. Actually, actually, yeah, this is a great game for non-gamers because honestly, what makes it a little bit dull to me is that a lot of the game design that it's doing is good game design, but it's not necessarily unique. 
you know, like how you have some platforming sections, some puzzle sections, some cool storytelling sections, but none of it is like super unique to stray other than like the character design and the character animation and all that. So the problem is like, uh, I'm going, okay, I'm going to sit down for this game and I go, well, first of all, I've already played 90 minutes of it. And based on that, I know exactly what the next 90 minutes is going to be. And I'm not super invested in the story. So why would I sit down to play that when I have other games to play? So it's actually, it's a fantastic game for people who don't really play games. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. I really thought this was going to be on the game of the year list, but honestly, I'm not going to nominate it. Kyle's Kyle's I, more than happy to nominate if he wants to, but not I, for me. I don't think games of the year. I mean, I, I could be biased. I don't think games of the year can be unless it's like an indie game, but like it wins the indie game reward can be less than like a specific amount of time because I don't know. Takes, I <laughs> it takes two is not that long, but that's to me. I think you need to bring it around. A, a decent chunk of time i mean how long was inscription rid- that one uh, inscription was only like year. 10 or 12 so was that was that a game of the year well for that was our game of the year our game of the year last year oh, easily okay. we're specifically talking easily. about our game of the year uh yeah i think inscription was probably longer than four hours yeah though. it was pretty like, long no it was i i think it was like 10 to 12 yeah. but i i, I kind of see your point jason but i think I, I I wouldn't go that far, but I would say length is absolutely needs to be considered when discussing game of the year. But if you are 30 minutes long and you blow my fucking socks off. True. You're in the discussion because there was you there know, was a lot of at least Winnie the, uh, Winnie the Pooh's home run baseball. Right. <laughs> at, at GameSpot, there was a lot of discussion. I hadn't I haven't played it yet either, which was before your eyes, which is a game that I believe you use your webcam for because when you blink in real life it changes the scene so like your life's going by you before your eyes um and a lot of people or actually one or two people were wanted it for game of the year on the list and then uh they were talking about it and like hey it's a quick game so a lot of people played it overnight uh in the next day and it actually i think it made it onto our top 10 because of that and that that's a great point of like a game couldn't be, I don't think it was 30 minutes. I think it was like two or three hours, but game can be short and blow your mind and, and impact you like that. And it can definitely make, make a game in the year list. Yeah. But it's also, it, it also, it's to hard. your point, Jason, like it, 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 part of it's art, but part of it is also, you are paying money for these experiences Yeah, and that value plays into it. So it's kind of, how do you, how do you embrace games? Do you embrace it as this is an aesthetic piece that I want to experience? Or is this a piece of entertainment that I want to get my it's, money and enjoyment's well, it's, worth out of, it's, you know, it also, those two and three hour ones not to get off too far, but like, those are also really hard games to get a lot of replayability off of. Cause a lot of time, the two or three hours was the, Oh my God, this is fucking insane. But you don't get yeah. that same grab when you play it replay it again i'm not yeah. going to see inscriptions sick twist when i play it again uh which is a bummer because i thought the first part was my favorite part of the game rather than i love the gameplay of the first part a lot so but like this going through that phase was like insane but i don't get that anymore so that's that's a harder one mm-hmm. to really yeah yeah so yeah so so definitely comes into consideration but i i yeah, it's just it's weird because I, I was pretty high on Stray after that first sit down, but coming back to it, not so much. Um, there's another game on this list, though, that I can't stop playing. It's called Pokemon White. Uh, oh, I'm not this guy. I'm not. All right, I'm ready. I'm, I'm not going to talk about <laughs> it too much because Poke Will season two is coming and, and I don't want to spoil Will on some of those things. But I can absolutely 100 percent see why people love this gen of Pokemon so much. Uh, like when people talk about how they love Pokemon pokemon like what's their favorite pokemon this is up there in terms of responses at least based on what i've it it should be it's there's it's this game is just so creative like there is so much creative stuff in it um and it's it's interesting because not all of it works like there are seasons and weather and time of day activities and i just don't give a fuck about any of that i don't engage with any of that but if i was a super hardcore pokemon fan i'm sure that's mechanical depth i would love that and like shinies and ivies oh. the stuff i i normally don't give a shit about is it gonna um, be night every time i play i don't i don't think i don't you think can set so, the, but you can set the internal clock too yeah oh. but it's not like animal crossing it's not like it's gonna really fuck you it doesn't mess it, it doesn't it doesn't really yeah. matter will it matter like you get different stuff but oh, i it want really it to matter. fuck me it doesn't over. matter yeah um um but yeah it's and and it's just like this is still a pokemon king this is still a go through the story you're on these routes you're doing the badges you're doing the gyms but it is so creative in how it's doing each and every single one of those that it is like doing twists big and small on the formula the whole way through 
and I, I'm like 27 hours in. I'm like seven out of eight badges, and I'm just I'm just having a really good time. It, its team is so is one of the best. Plasma is probably one of the better teams still. The evil teams. Yeah. Too. Spoilers. Yeah, I don't even know the names. Uh, oh, that's, that's small. Plasma. That's yeah, small. They're. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. This game is actually probably I like four and three better, but this game why like black and white two is even better, which is crazy. But this is one of the few games that has a complete decks after like three and one, like 150 new Pokemon. Like it made its yeah. own decks. So you get a lot of bang for your buck, too. This is a, this is a great game. Ooh, it's probably one of the better like know. one off, like not linking to any other games. It's super good. Yeah, uh, it is a lot of Pokemon, so. It's great, and I'm playing it fresh. I've never played this before. I've never played this gen of Pokemon before. It's my first time playing it, and I'm loving it. It's, it's talking about games that hold up or don't hold up. This game 100% holds up. It's fantastic. Is there a catching of Pokemon in this game? No, actually, it's kind of... Look, I don't mean to spoil you, but you start with a full Pokedex, and as you play, oh. you have to release them. So <laughs> by the end, you're down to your team of six. <laughs> you don't have to. Idea. You don't have to release them. You have to kill. You have to take them out back and <laughs> shoot them. <laughs> well, you also start on Team Plasma as a Team Plasma lab. You, you are, are the bad, bad guy. guy. Oh, you are, you the, bad are guy. the bad guy. Yeah, and you're, you're um, off and trying to yeah. instead of beating gym leaders for a badge, you kill what? them. What? Well, as Ian you can kill tell you, yeah. I yeah. like catching Pokemon. Um, <laughs> yeah. You kill the professors, and instead of the final four, it's the three protagonists and their starters. It's just them oh. and their level and one And then you name them. You kill them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. After you've, on their tombstone. What, yeah. What's my grandson? <laughs> what's my grandson's tombstone? I can't remember. <laughs> Post credit scene. <laughs> Fuckhead. Oh, grandson's tombstone. Oh, fuckhead. I'll miss you so much. Um, anyways, it's fantastic. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, let's talk about House Flipper. Uh, I just wanted to touch on this real quick. Um, I played this based off of Will's recommendation because I talked about Power Wash Simulator um, and how I was I was having some fun with that, but it was a little bit too monotonous because it's the same thing. It's just power washing. And Will, you brought up that this has a bunch of different activities. Um, and so I played it for about 45 minutes and um, it definitely has more activities, but it's not, I'm not really enjoying it, but it it, it just has a, Will, you, you played this game, right? Yeah. It has just a little bit of weird in it, right? Like, like an almost accidental weird, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the right settings. It could be a horror video game. It's like creepy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Cause like, like you're like, you start the game and you're like, I don't have enough money to buy a house to flip. So I'm just going to do like odd jobs for people, but you're working out of your, your like basically tiny house, your one room, tiny house. And it's an absolute wreck like it's disgusting and you can kind of clean it up but not really and it's just like this is my office and it's just like literally like shit smeared on the walls <laughs> and like pizza boxes in your bed it's just like disgusting um and then you're like going into people's houses and like one of the first ones was like i broke up with my boyfriend and he stole my radiator can you put a new radiator in and also clean up the place and like the place is just like trash. Like there was clearly like a giant domestic abuse case here and the game is just like glossing over it. And it's it's and then there's like there's one who's just like, hey, we're having a baby. Uh, if I throw money at you, can you just like clean our entire house and like make the nursery for us? But the thing is, like, like, like you said, Will, like if they put more effort into this, if they knew what they were doing. This could be a horror game or more like My Summer Car where it's a sim, but it's yeah. also just very weird. Like, like they don't, they don't, like they have window cleaning, but the window cleaner looks like a mini vacuum that's also a squeegee. So it's just like they, they keep making weird design decisions. And I'm going to speak on behalf of the developer now. I don't think they realize how weird it is. Like, yeah. I think they're just like, yeah, this sounds like a normal situation, right? Let's like a normal tool. And it's like, no, you have like weird little things all throughout this game. And I think they need to lean into that more because they could make something very, very weird. Like halfway through, it turns into like a crypto game because you're like, fuck houses. I'm flipping the crypto, baby. And then you start flipping oh, no. NFTs yeah. and stuff. Right. Like okay, even thanks. being like going into someone's house and like or like for that baby one, <gasps> you could like get all the baby stuff ready and then like yeah like oops never mind miscarriage yeah like but not and then you have to like go that and but undo it all and you have to undo it all or like you're in another place and you like open the door and you're like oh sorry i didn't realize someone was home 
and like there's yeah. like someone just standing there and like like yeah. there's so many opportunities it doesn't have to be horror like you could have made it like weird or funky or yeah. like there's like everybody's got weird houses <laughs> Like remember yeah. that first level of SWAT four where they're like, we have a hostage situation. You're like, okay, oh my and you start going through oh it, my and you start to slowly realize this is a serial killer's house, oh. and he has a basement and like chain oh. doors and stuff. I forgot. Like, just, it. like going into somebody's house is a very personal and invasive and creepy, inherently creepy thing. So for you to be like going into people's houses to do this stuff and then also buy their house and have to like be like, I'm going to buy your house, which is shitty, even though you live in it to make money off of it. Like, like make this a weird sim game, you know, and yeah. they didn't do that. There's a market here. Let's make I, video games. I we can can't do believe you brought up that SWAT level because as someone Incredible. who thought it was just going to be like a Rainbow Six Siege and had no idea was, what was going to happen. I think I you can see my that. reaction in that stream. It is. That I mean, that game's great, but that first level blew my mind. Um, God, yes, God, yes. God. Um. <coughs> anyways, the final final game I want to talk about. I know I'm talking about a lot of games, but honestly, I feel like I have something a nice discussion around each of them. And the final one is <laughs> you don't <laughs> multiver <laughs> multiverses. Have you guys played any of this brand new free to play <laughs> Smash clone from Warner Brothers? Not. But I've watched professional Smash Brother player tournaments for like already for him. And Batman's I watch a Batman versus uh Oh really? The what's the guy with the oh my god from Adventure? LeBron? Man. No, not LeBron. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've heard LeBron is OP and everybody keeps playing him. He's new, isn't he? That's why. Well, is I think DLC? the game Yeah, Rick and Morty. They were added to the open beta. It was in oh, okay. like yeah. So I so I think before. LeBron got added late, yes, but he did yes. he he is there for the open release now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I've been playing it. Um, I mean, first of all, I'll talk about the positive. I love Smash clones. Like, give me more Smash clones. Like, even when they're not good, it's just like I love Smash as a genre, like a fighting game genre. Like that's the only fighting game I like to play. And so give me more of those, like the concept of just all these wonky ass characters from different IPs, throw them in there. Mm -hmm. I love that this is free to play. Like I just went on my console and I just downloaded it. Like I'm not having to invest money into this. Like the bar is very low. Just get me involved. Um, I didn't, I didn't engage too much with like the currencies and the monetization, et cetera, but it seems pretty simple. It feels like it's 2000 coins to unlock one of the locked characters. And each match I was making like two or 300 coins. So it doesn't seem that oh. difficult to like, to unlock the characters it's not it's not like apex legends where could you even unlock the characters in apex legends or was it just yeah, 16 bucks each but it would take forever it was just Correct. like it would take a while Im impossible yeah um however this game look look folks i think we all have come on this journey with me where i've realized i'm not very good at video games yep. and i also don't like fighting games so i don't really play them but this i i can tell you this factually and objectively and i don't think i'm wrong here and I, I'm going to use a technical term, which I believe I'm using correctly. This game feels very floaty. There is a lot of floating. Like the gravity in this game doesn't work. Like, and it's not just like you jump up and then you could do like an up recovery. And, and it's like you jump up and then you just slowly float back down. Like You're literally like that's everybody's peach. Everybody's peach. Worse everybody's than peach, peach, I would say. Like, like it's crazy. Like there are moments where I'm like, how am I still in the air? Like I jumped up, I did one thing five seconds later, I haven't touched the ground yet. Um, so it's very floaty and, and it just doesn't feel good because of that. And the UI navigation is a little wonky. Um, I, I don't know, Jason, I'm curious, was, was there any feedback from the Smash players on this? There, well, it was like the Smash, I was watching, the, there was, people were already crazy at the fucking game because there's going to be grinders yeah. whenever they play the game. The Batman versus, the, again, the Adventure Time guy. Oh my God, it's Finn. I couldn't remember his name. Finn. Finn versus Batman was like a, sick match it was a like sweet matchup and they were like doing combos and full stuff they did look a little floaty people were dying off the top more than most smash brothers games so that already kind of yeah you, you do end up in the air a lot more yeah, yeah like they were dying like pretty low percentages too so i don't know I, I i watched that one and i watched like one other round of stuff it looked fun like i mean that's the point of it i mean it looked better than that yeah. stupid nickelodeon one that came out i played the nickelodeon one so i'm more interested in this yeah. one than that but I didn't get much feedback. I think, you know, it's still early and on that they're just kind of still testing the water, seeing if it's playable, having their own combos. Maybe if it yeah. doesn't go deeper, they don't balance it right away. It could fizzle a little bit more. But yeah, it's open data, I will say so. I will say the online feels pretty good. 
Um, yeah. You know, you're just like you pick your character, you pick what type of match you want to do, and then it and then it match makes you from there, and then you're into it, and then you can pretty quickly and easy after the match say like I want to rematch, and I think if everybody agrees, then you rematch right away. Um, so it's it's a game that free to play was absolutely the right move because it's going to get people to try it out like me. You know, maybe if I have some friends over and we don't really know what to play, I'm just like, look, let's just hop in this or whatever. You know, it's it, and so I want more Smash clones and I want them to be free to play and I want them to have some crazy IP stuff in it because uh, I think that's the way to go forward. You can't. The Nickelodeon game was a reach. Even Smash Brothers, if it wasn't super established, if they came out with that today and they said, look, it's a Nintendo brawler for 60 bucks. It's still like, oh, it's a bit of a reach. So it you cannot yeah. establish a new Smash clone at that price even 40 bucks is a bit too much so absolutely make it free to play put a shitload of cosmetic microtransactions in there don't make the grind too hard but maybe you pay to unlock characters quicker and that's that's that seems like a recipe for success so if you're if you're interested at all try it out it's free folks it's free totally we love michael transactions around here uh it's our favorite yep. thing folks uh that's all the games we've been playing which means it's time to talk about the news which means we have to play the world's longest news theme uh brought to you by save data here's the news it's gaming news we're talking about news what's up news but now there's more to the song so you can sing along and it won't bore you though unlike factorio kingdom hearts was played by ian and he really loved pirates of the caribbean but we don't want to have a vocal spat so let's bring it back to your local chat thank you zach for doing that every time he does that a child dies sorry that's not funny (laughs) wow i'll let him know that he is actively polluting the world oh no children live when he plays that song um they want to die is what i meant Mm. to say oh perfect even better (laughs) um (laughs) quickly ian i have been saving over the past six months uh a dollar a day don't do the math but i finally saved up three hundred dollars to buy a vr headset please tell me what my options are well, uh, you have two options, but you only have about three days left to do it because, folks, let's talk about one of the most bonkers gaming news stories I have ever seen in my life. Uh, Facebook, a.k.a. Meta, a.k.a. Facebook, has decided to increase the price of the Oculus Quest 2 by $100. So their headsets are no longer uh 299 and 399 Damn. they are now 399 and 499 for the 128 gigabyte and the 256 gigabyte versions respectively i i forgot to look this up but the quest 2 i believe has been out for two years now at an established price point at one point they actually reduced prices because i believe it was 64 and 128 gigabyte and they upped the storage for free but they are literally just coming out and saying look these three four hundred dollar headsets are now four five hundred dollars there's no hardware change. There is no change at all other than the price. Oh, yeah, and we'll throw in Beat Saber for free. Did they, did they give a reason in their actual like notes or anything or the news? Yes, they said, uh, quote, Now, we're making a change that will help us continue to invest for the long term and keep driving the VR industry forward with best-in-class hardware, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's pretty much it. So basically, uh, I think the underlying part here is that they have always subsidized the price of these headsets. These headsets, I've said it for a long time now, are a fantastic deal. They are the best VR headsets by far. They have uh, one of the best qualities. They are absolutely wireless. They're standalone. They work with the PC. They run games on their own. The controllers are fantastic. The headsets are fantastic. The only problem was the Facebook tie-in. And at $300 and $400, they were an absolute steal compared to... Uh, you know, Windows headsets, the Valve Index, the uh, Oculus Rift S, which quickly got basically discontinued because it's not as good as these. It, it, it's basically I what I think is happening is that they have always subsidized the cost of these. The same as the same as Sony and Xbox do and Nintendo with the new consoles, where when the console first comes out, that switch, folks, it costs them more than three hundred dollars to make that. 
but they're selling it to you for three hundred dollars because they want you in the ecosystem so they can make money off accessories and, and software. It, that's how it is with game consoles. If you had to pay for a PlayStation Five or an Xbox Series X, what it should really be costing is probably like seven or eight hundred dollars. But they're not charging that because they want you in the ecosystem. And it feels like this is meta on the backs of their sad financial success lately. I'm sorry, their financial downturn lately, basically saying, how about we stop subsidizing these headsets or we subsidize them less? This is insane. This is insane. This is a mid-console price increase with no hardware change. Am I crazy here? Isn't this insane? No, this that's off? crazy. This insane? That's like if they yeah. were like, hey, I mean, it, literally, if the PS5, they were like, it just added Minimal. $100 to it. And we're like, hey, yeah, it's just more expensive now. Um, like even a vague attempt at trying to make up the price would have gone over yeah. better than this. Um, just a, yeah. just, there isn't like a legit reason. I don't think if you march with a reason, maybe, and like you could buy in, get people to buy in. I mean, yeah. people would already still be questionable, but they're... or like you a get a hundred dollar store credit or something, like yeah. even yeah. something like that, because like, you're still in the ecosystem. And even this Beat Saber thing, it's only till the end of the year. Yeah, and Beat Saber, I think, is only $30 at full price when it's not on sale. Yeah. So. Wild. Absolutely wild. Do you, do you, honest question to both of you, uh, do you think that VR is like fool's gold? Like, I, I know it's like legitimately no. people like, 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 do you think it can go further? Like, is it, is this? I don't know, like, uh, how far can you go with VR realistically, or right now at least, in terms of, like, like what we have, what is coming out? Is this, is this, like, something that is worth the investment at the current moment, or should you wait until more progress has been made with the, you know, just entire components? I don't know. I think it's, like, a, like I'm not saying it's bad or anything at all, I'm, I promise. I just don't know how, with how many yeah. tweaks and stuff, like, seem to be coming down the pipeline, how established this is. So this, the, the Quest 2 and the Rift S were the first times that it felt like a VR headset was ready for mainstream. And there was kind of two reasons for that. Number one, the tech got to a point where it didn't feel like you were buying something pre-alpha. Like even, even the Oculus Rift and the Quest 1 and the Samsung Gear, they were, they were production devices. But the resolution was so low and the quality was low and there were too many constraints. You know, you could, you, you're... Even the, um, the, uh, shit, what's the, what's the steam one called? Oh, the uh, Vive, Vive. Vive. Yeah. Yeah. Index. You, the VR worked, but it also felt like, I can't believe I just spent several, several hundred dollars on this crappy screen attached to my face and these controllers that aren't quite working. And like, I, I bought a Rift S when it came out and I'm happy with it. I don't play it nearly as much. Um, the main limitation being like, you've got to hook it up to the PC and do all that. And it's annoying. But like the the Quest 2 is fantastic. Like it's a very high resolution screen. It's literally wireless. It's literally standalone. So you put it on, you use the controller to pick a game and you're playing a game. It's it's VR as it should be. There's still some minor problems with it, like being a little bit too heavy and it can be a little bit too wonky with the interface, but it's still fantastic. Like like the headset, there, there are plenty of people who are like, hey, I took my headset out. You know, it's got a two or three hour battery life. I went to a warehouse and I played in a 30 by 60 foot space, you know, just doing whatever I want. There's no, no constraints on it. The biggest problem, however, though, is the, is the games. Like th there is a very good catalog of fantastic games, you know, like, uh, bone works, uh, beat saber, VTOL VR, walking dead saints and sinners. All those games are fantastic, but there's still way too many games, even from AAA companies, that are just like, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to do Final Fantasy 15 VR, and it's just like a weird little fishing mini game. Yeah. Like, like part of the problem is that this is in the very infancy, infancy of VR. So it's kind of like the early times of movies where people were like, yo, check it out. It's a horse. It's like, oh, shit. It's a fucking horse. <laughs> There's a train coming at me. Oh, my God. And then you're like, okay, what else you got? Like, there's not enough studios that know how to make a good and compelling VR game. And um, that's kind of the problem is that the hardware is an incredible steal, even at the four and $500 that they're now selling it at. 
the question is, are you going to find enough like software to make that worth it? And that's kind of the problem that I've had with my headset is half of it is the pain of plugging it in and getting that going and hooking off my PC, which the Quest 2 doesn't have. But the other half of it is is it's only once every couple months that there's a game that comes along that I finally pick up and I go, OK, it's time to play Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Or I go, oh, shit, VTOL VR added an attack helicopter. Hell yeah. Like yeah. there there are fantastic games. This is this is not the virtual boy like this tech works. And when you find the right game, it's some of the best gaming you will ever have. Like VTOL VR is one of the best games I've ever played gaming experiences. But the problem is that it's too, too, too far and few between, if that makes sense. Does that kind of answer your question? I mean, yeah, I, but like that, my, my, the crux of what I was getting to, if it was worth, if the thing was going up to 400, the price change, obviously shitty reasons because they didn't really give one. If you had that, those games that were, even if they're few and far between, the experience still drew you in. Is that worth the price point change still? Well, I, I think so. And, and to kind of, to kind of push it back on you or, or will, how many, how many must play games is enough to justify a console. It's like the it's like yeah. the Wii U question. Yeah. Like the Wii U for me hit a threshold where it was a great console because it had enough games. It was like like eight or nine or ten games that I was like, these are must plays on this console and they're fantastic. And that's enough to justify the cost of the console. And I think for for the VR headset, especially for the Oculus Quest Two, even at four or five hundred, it is right there on the threshold where it justifies it. Yeah, I, I don't think it's it's not quite there. That threshold hasn't broken for me. You, I, I think you did a great comparison with film of like, ah, here's a horse, here's a train coming. Because uh, in my mind, I was equating it to sort of like mobile games before the smartphone, where everyone yeah. was like, we need to make a mobile game. And there were all these mobile games for flip phones that were like shitty and crappy. They and then once so the smartphone bad. came around, there was a good device that could play games on it. Yeah. It had a touchscreen. There were new innovative touchscreen controls, all this sort of stuff. So I, I'm like, I think we're almost there. But for me, it's the next device that is that leap from the flip phone to the smartphone that that Absolutely. I think then yeah. everyone will jump in on. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, for me, it's not. It wasn't worth it before, and it's definitely not worth it now uh, to pay that much money for it. <laughs> But it could be once it hits that threshold in my in my mind. But but honestly, my my big problem, I'm right there with you. Like I thought about buying an Oculus Quest 2, but I have a Rift S, which is close enough for now. I mm -hmm. I, I was 100 percent ready to buy a Quest 3. I was like, look, just drop the Quest 3. It's going to be enough of a tech upgrade for me to upgrade from the Rift S and I'll keep playing these great VR games. But the number one problem for me now for me, this story is not them saying, hey, we're going to raise the price on the Quest 2. This is them saying, hey, uh, we don't really give a shit about sales of this hardware. So we're not going to subsidize the price anymore and lowball the price to get people to buy it. We're going to we're going to we're going to increase the price on these because we know we can get away with it. Yeah. That's why the fucking Valve Index is I believe it's a I think it's a thousand dollars plus. If you go out and you want to buy a Valve Index and you have to get the lighthouses with it. And the controllers, I believe it's a thousand dollars plus. Like these VR headsets are not cheap, and them not subsidizing it means when that Quest Three comes around, it's probably going to be six or seven hundred dollars. There's rumors of a Quest Pro, which is supposed to be like more of a enterprise, like high end version. The rumors on that are fifteen hundred dollars, and that's wow. going to kill this fucking industry. Like these people are fucking morons, and I'll tell you why. My nephew. He got a Quest 2 for Christmas. You know what was the number one fucking reason why he got a Quest 2 for Christmas? Because it was on sale at Target for $280, and his parents were like, oh, $280, yeah, perfect, Christmas gift range. Four or five hundred dollars for a Christmas gift for like a nine-year-old? No, that's too much money. That's too much money. But if it's yeah. $280 on sale at Costco, fuck yeah, get it. They need to keep dropping the fucking price on these. Because the reason why the software isn't there is because the install base isn't there. They need to get this shit into every fucking home possible. And then you're going to have an install base of 10 million plus, And then all these developers are going to be like, holy shit. Yo, if we make a really good VR game, the install base is already 10 million. Like, I, I, this is such, this is just bass fucking backwards, man. It's crazy. I just, I just don't know until like you guys like said uh, you briefly mentioned like until it get, becomes more i think refined uh, the next system like how far even with the boost in price which is obviously going to hurt because people are now hesitating on that 
Mm-hmm. How how niche, niche is VR still at the current moment? At the current moment, it's not that niche. Yeah, I don't think like, so. And, and I'll tell you why. Because when you talk to a kid and you say, "Hey, what gaming system do you want?" They go, "I want an Xbox. I want a PS5. I want a Switch. I want an Oculus." It's up there. It is a console to them that they want. Yeah. And when they get that, it's novel enough. It's like the Wii. Like you see some kid doing that. All the adults are going to be like, you know, let me try it. Let me try it. And all of a sudden they're playing job simulator for 20, 30, 40 minutes. Jumping. So like, like it's there. You just need to get this in homes. Like the quest two is the perfect, the perfect intro to VR because it works and it's cheap and yeah. it gets it into people's homes. It's, it's like that first TV, that first radio. It's like, holy shit, this new tech is accessible to me. And it's going to become a must have. And them raising the price is completely fucking counter to that. Your Facebook, eat the cost. I don't give a shit. You need to build the industry out yourself and then you'll make money in the back end. You fucking morons. Like, how do they? I mean, even on top of that, not to continue talking about on this topic, but how are people accessing the metaverse if you're not letting people yeah. get these VR systems into their homes to convert them to your 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 weird world you're building? Like. People want yeah. to be immersed and the best way to immerse them in your shitty metaverse is probably by putting their face inside of your device. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, like they have, I'm reading from the, from the meta quest blog, people have spent over $1 billion in the quest store on quest apps. Like they are making bank on this sucker and they have barely even cracked the market. Now, do you think they're raising the price of the, of the quest Two? to stop people from buying it so when they announce the quest three it's even cheaper no and then people are jumping on it seems a little no. bit too high bro. no i i don't i, I tell you exactly <laughs> what happened exactly what happened again this is conjecture but i guarantee you this is what happened i don't know if you've noticed but facebook's stock and facebook's value has absolutely fucking cratered because their ad business has cratered because it turns out they were invading everybody's fucking privacy so all it took was one apple ios update to basically have an opt-in for privacy concerns and it literally cratered Facebook's ad business because they couldn't gather data on people's iPhones anymore. And then Google followed suit with something similar. So Facebook has just like cratered their ad revenue. And so now they've got to raise the price on these headsets to try and offset some of that loss and fund future VR development. But but they don't realize that this is a poison pill. Like they're shooting themselves in the foot. This is the time when you try to make it as cheap as possible to get people hooked, man. You know, that that first ounce is free, you know? Heroin. Oh, it's always back to heroin. Let's talk about, let's talk we'll about go something back else. To heroin. Uh, moving yeah. on here, uh, Black Panther, uh, the superhero of the Black Panther movies. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was trying to think of it. <laughs> um, he was, he's, he's a panther, and he is the color of night. It's, it's stray, but with panthers. Is, Are you kidding me? Is, what color is his skin? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Dark, 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 suit? dark, suit? dark, onyx. Uh, anyways, oh, black, that was a great bit, great <laughs> bit, guys. Uh, black Panther, uh, uh, open world game is uh, reported by Jeff Grubb of oh, Giant wow. Bomb, uh, co worker of mine, Jeff Grubb. I've just now realized. I- I don't mean to jump the gun here, but I somehow missed the open world part. I don't know how I feel about that. It's basically Far Cry. Open world single player game. um, Without guns. For uh, possibly, uh, or supposedly, sorry, by um, a studio formed by the former head of Monolith who made Shadow of Mordor, which is good, and Shadow of War, which is not good. Um, I, yeah, I don't know how I feel about, like, I think... It all depends on the Wait, setting, you know. You miss you missed another part too. They might since they can't use T'Challa, or they're debating whether or not to use the actual Black Panther, because obviously using his likeness is pretty disgraceful. Or, you know, what? Not no, you can very tactful. What? You could well, but what they 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 debated whether or not they're going to make a player character that you can insert. Oh, there. oh, I see what like you're custom character. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Which I thought I they were saying would go over well can't... at all. I thought they were saying you can't play as T'Challa because Chadwick Boseman died, which to no, me was know. crazy. But I see what you're saying. Yeah. They well, want. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. That's what I, 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 mean, I worded look, it horribly. I don't mean to take this on a tangent, but like I, I watched a little bit of that new Black Panther trailer and I got very <laughs> upset 
everybody got upset, but everybody else was getting emotional because they're like, we miss Chadwick Boseman. And this is such a touching tribute. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, Marvel? Like a man died of cancer at a very young age. And you're like, let's write that into our next billion dollar blockbuster. And it's like I so so me seeing this game like. I, I, I'm afraid they're going to do the same thing where they're just going to be like, let's profit off this man's death and make it a game about like the Black Panther's dead. We have to do a new hero. You know, I don't know what the proper way to do it is, but I don't feel right about profiting off that man's death. I, yeah. I do not think that they can pull this off correctly because I, the last besides Spider-Man, besides Spider-Man, take out all the Spider-Mans that have been great over the years. Can you name another, even just superhero? I don't think there's been been many superhero where you are open world that have been successful. It just doesn't. I can't. I can't name one. Okay. I don't know another. I, Hulk, I don't, Ultimate Smash. I, I believe that's what it's called. It, it's I believe a great that's what game, it's called. By the way. But yeah. I'm gonna look it up. But yeah, that, the Hulk. I think it came out. The Hulk. Oh, no, I think this was earlier. This was the Hulk with the Ang Lee movie. There was a video game with it. There's two. That Hulks. was very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Hulk like Ultimate Destruction. That's a really good game. It's open world. I, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check which one. But yeah, yeah, the Hulk games was. Um. So if you take out Spider Man, it's Are there the, any? the premise. is just. I, that's what I'm saying. Like you could Superman? go to that Marvel game, that the Avenger game Superman? was dog shit. So yeah, Superman yeah. sixty four. Uh, that's a little <laughs> a fantastic flying video game. Rings, folks. Flying through rings, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. I, I think, I, and that's that's what made me concerned. Is like I don't trust them with an open world. Just give me like a super tight, refined single player game. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Just linear campaign it. Boom. Just put all that time I, and effort into defined levels and experiences. I I'm okay with that. If you had open world. I think the problem is, I think Black Panther's area. Like, where are you going? Like, are you just roaming? Yeah, that's the, the area thing. that he already should have covered. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, just in like Wakanda think, or something. Yeah, you in Wakanda, but Wakanda is already hidden. Like, at least I don't know if they're gonna change that in the story coming up in the MCU New Marvel because now it's not hidden. Because yeah. everybody at the end of the movie, they're like, "Oh, we're here." So I don't know if you're just gonna be killing people that know where they are now. But for the most part, you are by yourself yeah but spider-man also like lends himself to open world because spider-man's whole thing is traversal and it's Correct. fun yes. and it's new york city like black panther runs fast though he can jump he can do all, all kinds of athletic stuff I, yeah I, it's just, but there's it's not just, like think, i'm not flying or like superman i think I'm would make a good a open world game yeah. iron man they say they say open world but honestly i think this is going to be hub i think this is going to be like hey these several missions take place in the Bronx, these several missions take place in Wakanda. These several missions take place in whatever Eastern European country they made up for the Avengers. You know, like, I don't think this is going to be like a single Sokovia. defined open world location because that's a bad idea. But literally, I'm changing my mind because it's a bad idea. That's probably what they're going to do. Yeah, because th that makes I sense. Like, what defines an open world game? Like, uh, like, I think people or at least I've dreamed of like an open world X-Men game, but mostly you're going to Xavier's yeah. school and then you're going off on missions like Xavier's school's open yeah. world, but it's not one big map. Be, so like it would be like the X-Men Legends game, but not like locked to the you go. You start your hub is an X-Men school and then yeah. you go to like different missions. I mean, like I think a great X-Men game would be you choose all your powers and then they drop you as a baby. I, at, well, at the door i <laughs> i do not like look i don't think and this is black panther is he's a great character he's a very hard character to make him do a lot of stuff as like a gameplay character because he he literally just is like enhanced just abilities like climbing it'd be like assassin's creed is what you could probably do but he's not like anything crazy like spider-man who has like different ways like webs like the super yeah. strength and webs and, and tech, traversal gadgets. yes gadgets he doesn't have like he does, but like for the most part, you are just running fast, like you said, climbing and then like what slashing people with your. your yeah, yeah, I, I think I think just to button up the discussion, this it all sounds like it sounds like for all of us, we're not excited about this game because we don't trust them to do it right. Correct. And at that point, it's just here comes another mediocre triple A game. Yes, I think so. I think that's where we're at. That's where we're at. Like I'm, I'm so like, moving on. Do you, do you have a point? No, I, <laughs> uh, sir. Do you have a point? No, I just want to say like I'm like Black Panther's not a crazy awesome character that I'm in love with, but like I love Doctor Strange. So if they said Doctor Strange open world, I think oh, yeah, I'd be like, oh my god, 
Of course you fucking do. A pre-movies Doctor Strange, thank you. Um, okay, okay. So, like, I would be excited, but I would still have those same concerns because I'm like, what is an open world? Like, it's the same thing. What is an open world Doctor Strange game? Yeah. Like, just because I love a character doesn't mean I want him all over everything, you know? Like, less is more with that stuff, so. So I think yeah, it's not about Black Panther. It's about how we hate Monolith. Um... Anyways, moving on, folks, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, the remake of one of my favorite games of all time, a game I have never finished but played many, many times, is on pause amid a studio shakeup. Fuck. 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 Because I, I have not played the original. Apparently, the original is just practically impossible to play right now because it just doesn't run on modern systems. It doesn't run well. And uh, it's a little hard to go back to it. And uh, no, I, I've heard it like barely runs on PC. So it's on unless the Series you're like, X, so is it though? It is. I thought that, I thought that was just the Switch Cloud version that had the the nope. back compat. But anyways, um, so I was very excited. I was like, boom, remake, boom. This is my opportunity to play it. And uh, this news basically says that the studios in shambles, several directors have left and the game has currently planned for what was it? 2025. But that plan is up in the air now. I'm not happy about this. Jason, yeah. are you happy about this? I never like you never played the original. If I ever played it. it was wow. Like remake. Come on, boys. Uh, I play, hey, I played I played the uh, the uh, the whatever the, the open world one is. I forget not the open world. The old Republic. Jedi order fallen order. No, the oh, the, the, the MMO. MMO. Oh, 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 the old oh, Republic. Yeah, the old Republic. Old Republic. Yes, yeah. that's pretty I cool. like that. Yeah, it's pretty. Cool. Uh, I, I, the only thing with Kodar that I, I, I remember going back, I was like, I hope if they remade this game, the combat was weird. <laughs> it is. It was weird. strange to me. It, I don't I, know how to explain it because it's not like turn based, but it is. It's fucking yeah. strange. It's like semi turn based, but not really. So I played the first one a lot. I have never beat the first one. I have tried. So this may lend itself to Ian's point. I have tried it on Xbox, uh, original Xbox. I owned it on PC and I th think Xbox 360. And my save has corrupted all three times at different points throughout the game. So to Ian's point. Uh, that does happen. I've been meaning to replay it. I've wanted to. The second one I have also touched a little bit and is also backwards compatible on the Xbox uh, Series X. So I've thought about just I have played the first three quarters of the first game so many times that I might just jump to the second one and try that from Obsidian that I heard is pretty well well regarded. But regardless of all this, I am very disappointed they're not um, at least trying to do this remake. I thought it'd be really fun and cool to see a lot of like that's like one of my childhood games to, so to see that like kind of like remastered um i think that's that game's like my final fantasy so like when they announced this or final fantasy 7 sorry so when they announced this i was like yes a remake of this i, I always just in the same vein i'm not trying to go too far off i, I think it's if you like a game that like it's if it's just like code or you and you get this news you knew it was going to be remade you're like oh fuck yeah finally i get to like see it like on the big screen other people can get access to this it can yeah. be fucking crushing to read something like now it's being put off like or like it's not being remade or it's being delayed i can understand that completely so the news itself is pretty grim as of now uh so hopefully i mean just like advanced wars got pushed off hopefully it's just a delay uh yeah and your game yeah they should bring away. that back because like i think the look that war is still happening but like the sensitivity around that war has gone down. They should they, just, uh, as soon as they release. announced the new date, something else is going to happen. I think they did. I already think they released. Oh, okay. It. It's next. It's next year already. Like, yes, but it's nine eleven. Nine eleven two is going to happen. <laughs> but yes, so it's a little bit unfortunate. Oh. So. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to a big exclusive woosy news story about rockstar games vroom, vroom. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a two-part two-part report by jason schreier over at bloomberg uh basically saying that rockstar games has really cleaned up its frat boy culture 
uh, there's been a lot of criticism about some of the like transphobia in Rockstar Games GTA 5 uh, in particular, as well as some like toxic uh, crunch heavy culture. Um, and Jason Schreier is basically reporting on a lot of reports that that uh, there's been a huge tone shift at the company. The company feels more professional now. They've gotten rid of people who were who had numerous complaints to get them. They've tried to, to remove some of that uh, transphobic jokes from the game. Uh, but the other thing is that GTA 6, we've heard these rumors before, but this is Jason oh. Schreier throwing his hat in the ring. GTA 6 takes place in and around Miami. Two protagonists, one of which will be female for the first time in the series history. Mm-hmm. And the game is currently planned for, I believe, 2025. Uh, or no, sorry. It will be sometime in the 2024 fiscal year, which is April 2023 through March 2024. Holy yeah, uh, developers are skeptical, but holy shit, that's like a year and a half away to um, the end of that. So I'm excited about this. I'm excited. I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing. What do you guys think? I'm very excited. I like playing GTA games the first time. Uh, they're fun yeah. to go through. They're they're always like a wild ride. Like say what you will about replayability or I mean gameplay, all that sort of stuff. But I like that first time through a GTA is always great. Um, uh, some other details um, for this. Originally, it was going to be set in a place called Project Americas that they were working on, which was supposed to be North and South America, sort of like two city, like a bunch of different cities put together. But uh, I did some more research into this uh, for an article. So uh, putting this from like other sources before the Bloomberg report, but apparently they've scrapped that to do one city based in Miami or Vice City. Because apparently Miami still exists in GTA. It does. Vice City it does. is not Miami. It's Vice City, and then there's Miami. Yeah, yeah which crazy. I wow. didn't know. That's weird. Yes. Um, That's weird. Yeah, it's a weird. It's a weird thing. Yeah. So they want to do that, but they want to add cities over time, specifically to the single player, which I think is Give me great. Jacksonville, baby, and like Give me Liberty, Liberty City is supposedly on that list. Um, maybe San Andreas. I don't know how much of this goes over to online. I believe the plan is to do online completely separate from the GTA single six single player, which I think is a good yeah. thing to really separate those teams out. Um, the game world's going to be big. Um, and there was a couple other things. The, the twins, I believe they were supposed to be, this is older information, but supposed to be brother and sister twins. And apparently they're on both. Their parents were murdered by the cartel and they're on both sides of the w- drug war. So the brother is supposedly in the D- uh, the DEA. Is that what it is in the fake DEA? In, re- in, real, in real life, life DEA. yeah. And then I believe the daughter is supposed to be um, on the... She's not on the cartel side, but she's getting revenge on the cartel. Like on mm-hmm. the illegal side of that. So it, it sounds really interesting. That you're gonna, uh, you, you are playing as both... I think you do switch between them. Yeah. You switch back and forth. Yeah. Um, It's exciting. I I, I think. Yeah. There's been a lot of rumors about this, but having Jason Trier come in and confirm a lot of these rumors or at least add his weight behind a lot of these rumors makes me makes me pretty excited. I never played Vice City, but but that is just such a cool place to have a game. Florida and uh, there even some of the rumors were saying that it's like Cuba as well. Heck, yeah. Bring in that space. Give me some Scarface type stuff. Like they, this well, is... if you if you've ever played Vice City, it literally is a homage to Scarface. Yeah, like yeah. they have like a house with Scarface. It's like they they have like inside jokes about Scarface. I need to see how those uh, how those remasters have uh, panned out. Almost a year later, oh, yeah, yeah, I have. They them. probably have made zero changes to it. I would bet. I there were some big updates a while back, but I haven't heard a peep since. I think I think they dropped it. But... I mean, like both of my co hosts and and guest. I have said that uh, the GTA games are just good. I like yeah. I I want to fault GTA games, but they're they're really good games. And they're like good. the reason they haven't made another one is f- after five is because it holds up still. Like people can still have fun with it. Yes, it's not a yes. bad game. I want to bash it, but it, it's one of the most selling games not. of all time. It is yeah. might be uh, for a reason. Like I thought it, about it's close. I've thought about playing through. Four. I've never finished four. I've played about half of it because um, it usually Four's devolved good. into just me killing things. Um, four has a great ending. Four has a good ending. Man, maybe I should play through four. But with all the mods, though. All the crazy graphics mods. Yeah, but then I'd have to play on my computer. 
Actually, yeah, that's a good point. I wonder like, how it GTA is on the, is the controller games. I have it backwards compatible, so I wonder how it is play, on. That's why you play with a controller at Series your computer, X. Like I always do with most of my games. Yeah, but I don't want to sit here. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, maybe I'll play it. I, I'm in a weird place with games uh, right now. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> I mean, back games to the news. Have had some problems. Uh, she kicked me out last night. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She kicked. <laughs> fuck. I'm just sleeping on the couch with games. Um. Fuck you. Uh, can we end this? Do any of this rest of this shit yeah, matter? Yeah, just, just uh, real <laughs> quick hits here. I have these. I heard these at the top because these are some some crazy gaming out of China stories. Uh, so basically, uh, Roblox. Uh, they have a big relationship with uh, with with China, specifically with Tencent. And there were some internal documents revealed, basically how Roblox was planning to censor some of its content for uh, Chinese government censors, which is crazy because as far as I can tell, Roblox censors absolutely nothing right now. Uh, and some of the shit we've gotten away with on stream. Uh, and and the other part being that uh, one of Steam's biggest games is Wallpaper Engine simply because it allows people in China to easily view porn through the Wallpaper Engine marketplace. Um, I, I just like to touch on these because people don't realize that the gaming market in China, the entertainment market in China is crazy big. Like they keep we talk about Marvel movies, they keep funding these marvel movies with with restrictions in place like you have to film part of it in china you have to include these chinese actors etc um it's just the same for games like every time tencent or some other chinese gaming company puts a stake in in a western studio there is a very strong chance of chinese government spons- uh, uh censorship occurring so it, it it is something to be wary of i'm not trying to be xenophobic here but it really is China's a huge market. Lots of the games industry wants to get involved with that. But as they do come in place, weird restrictions and censorship and other details around that. So it's it's a little bit of a double edged sword there. This might be not be a question you can answer quickly or might not know the answer to. But are Chinese gaming companies like Tencent just as wary of the Chinese government or are they more aligned with the Chinese government? So. My understanding, very rudimentary understanding, is basically that a lot of these companies, especially the larger companies, they literally have government representatives as part of their staff. So either people that are paid by the government that are part of their board or board members who have close ties to the government. In some of the more extreme cases, you literally have part of the company, same as you have HR and you have, you know, a developer and you have a test region, you have a sales region. They will also have a government region or a, or a communist party, uh, a division of the company that is in charge of liaisons between the employees, the company, and the Chinese government. Wow. So, so it is it is hand in hand the the relationship between these large companies like Tencent and the Chinese government. Um, it's not just a matter of I have to kowtow to the government. A lot of it is we are acting on behalf of of, of the Chinese government. So that's that's kind of my concern is that as they start to get involved in a capitalist manner in Western studios. They, they it's a direct conduit to 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 Chinese nationalist communist policy, which in a lot of cases is not good for human rights in general. Yeah. Yeah. Because part of me was wondering, like, are there are there some of these like obviously some of these Chinese companies and developers are like want to get out from under the foot of the government. But I wasn't sure if there were like everyone was like that or there were some companies that were more in with the government and all this sort of stuff. So it's, it's just interesting to think about, like. People like to paint just the government as the bad guy, but there's some of those, some of the, that stuff no, that, I mean, that goes I, out pretty I mean, think about it. You are a large corporation in a yeah. communist society. You you are operating because the government allows you to yeah, operate, crazy. period. They can pull your license at any moment. I never thought, yeah. Uh, it's weird to think about it that way because it's just not the way our brains well, work. But. But the problem is we got to think about it because that money is being thrown out. Do you remember um, Age of Ultron and the Transformers movies, how they kept they kept like going to China and having moments in Chinese cities and having these like weirdly popular but completely unknown Chinese actors shoehorned into roles? It's because they were largely they had a huge part of their funding came from Chinese companies and Chinese banks. And so it was literally a requirement. It's like we're going to pay you a lot of money to help you make this movie, but you have to show China in a positive light and show these Chinese actors, et cetera. And yeah. so, so it, it in part becomes like Chinese propaganda. And don't put Finn on the poster. We get it. 
Yeah. Oh my god, I remember that shit. That, that's the kind of shit where it's like moon. that tilted me off the moon. Yeah, it's like it's like yeah, sure, give me your money, I'll make my shit. But as soon as you make me start to censor somebody because they're African American yeah. or 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 they're uh, they're LBGT African English, or yeah, and or... and you want to be racist or 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 homophobic. That's where I've got a fucking problem with it. So that's kind of my idea is like, I'm not, again, not trying to be xenophobic, but this is the shit right, you got to yeah. keep an eye on because it's creeping in here. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, that's wild. Uh, more quick hits uh, just uh, to get us out of here for the day. There's a, a Immortals Phoenix Rising spinoff supposedly coming set in Hawaii and Polynesia. Okay. That sounds fun. Uh, Tactics, Square, Tactics Ogre remake uh, details leaked yeah. on Sony's uh, store on the website. Yeah. Uh, Warhammer 40k and Gollum were both delayed. One of those games I'm going to play, and it's not Gollum. Uh, Papers, Please, come to the phone. If you like communism, Papers, Please is for you. Um, There's a PlayStation VR 2 early look, and then Stranger Things board game was announced. uh, With with the tease that additional Netflix properties may get some board games, which is uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'll take a Squid Game board game. Uh, let's play the music and let's get the heck out of here. I've had to literally shit for the past 25 minutes. Uh, pinch it off. <laughs> pinch it off. That's why I sit on a bucket, folks. Prairie, Jason. Prairie dog, folks. Jason Derulo. Dog. You can't prairie dog liquid there, Jason. <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 Dear oh, we call it the meniscus. Like God, a pool of water overhang. Jason, thank you so much for being here. Um, I have Probably missed so. you, and I'm glad you're on this episode. And um, you, you yeah. died in XCOM. That's sad. I no, I survived. Excuse oh, me. Oh, you survived. Never mind. I yeah, did. You, and the, the fucking save did. data community is ravenous for subpixel blood. And I survived <laughs> the XCOM mission, and everyone called me a coward for getting out. I, there was nothing I could. I'm a war hero. I'm a oh, war God. hero. <laughs> War survivor, more survivor. Like um, Jason, where can people find you on the internet if you want to be found? Uh, Twitter, the Green Ape Ball, or uh, Twitch.tv, the Green Ape Ball. Nice. Uh, for or Save Data. You can see me on oh, Save, save Data. data. Save there. Data. Yeah. Go check yeah. him out. Folks, check out his stuff. It's great. I get the alerts all the time, and then I watch a couple of minutes, and then I forget, and then uh, we all move on with our day. Um, you do stream a lot, and I do appreciate that. Um, you can find all of our stuff, subpixelfilms.com. Uh, brings you straight to our link tree where you can go to all the different places. You can find me on Twitter, me on Twitter at Hunty70. You can find the guy below me on Twitter at Nick Gibson. Folks, haven't done that in a while. We are Subpixel, and we will see you all next week.